Hi, in this session, I'm going to cover how to return multiple items based on one lookup value. So let's say we have a small table here, and we want to be able to put the scores. We have Mike, which is rep that sh shows up a couple times with different scores, and we want to be able to put that into this column format and have those scores uh, represented in the different columns. So maybe score 1 is 73, score 2 is 36, and score 3 is 72. Now if this was a small table, this would be fairly easy to enter, but if it was a large table, Mike showed up 20, 30, 40 times, or other names showed up that much, this wouldn't really be scalable. And so we can actually do this based on a formula. Let me go ahead and delete this, go and clear this out, and just select the first cell here. And this is basically the formula that we would use. And it's going to be an array formula. So what that means is uh, once you enter this formula, you have to enter it with the keyboard combination of the shift, control, and enter, or control, shift, and enter. And what it does is it creates an array formula. And it basically, an array is a collection of items. And as I go through an Excel tool called the Formula Evaluator, you'll see what an array formula uh, is going to look like. And so let's go ahead and just enter it, control, shift, enter. And you see Excel has put in the curly brackets at the front and end. Now, with this entered, a little description on uh, some of the main functions within this formula. Basically, with the index function, we have our index array here, A2 to B7, which is this table, A2 to B7. Now, what it's, what it's doing, it's looking at this array, and this small, this small function with the other uh, functions in there is going to look at the row number. So it's going to look at the row number, and this 2 here is going to bring back the column. So if it looks sees Mike, it's going to see the first instance of Mike here and bring back 73, and the column it's going to be the second column. When we move over to this other column here, it's going to look at the second second column. It's going to look at the second instance of Mike and bring 36. Third column, third row, third instance of Mike and bring back 72. So let me go ahead and get back into here. Okay curly brackets are gone, control shift enter, and bring up the formula evaluator so you can get a better idea of how these different functions work. So to bring up the formula evaluator, you have to press Alt, the Alt key, T U F. So that's going to bring back bring up this evaluate formula window and we're going to evaluate the formula. So this is what happens. First it's going to look at the if statement in here. It's going to see if this A2, A7, which is this table here, does this equal E2, which is Mike. And the array, f the array that comes up is it's going to see these collection of names. So you see we have our six names that show up here. And of those six, do they equal Mike? Do they equal E2? And if when that gets evaluated, you'll see a bunch of trues and falses. So of course, there's going to be three falses and three trues. So if I click evaluate, you'll see that now you see the falses there and the last three are trues. So now the next part of the if statement is it's going to look at the row numbers. It's going to look at the row numbers from A2 to A7. It's going to bring back the row numbers. The sec this is going to be the second row, third row, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So when I click evaluate, you'll see that it's two, three, four, five, six, seven. But in our table, a2 to B7, that's going to be the first row. That's going to be the second row. This is not this. This is not the second row. This is the first row in our table because we've selected A2 to B7. So what we need to do is minus one. So two minus one is one. Three minus one is two. So it's going to go from one to six instead of two to seven. So that brings that there. So now what happens with the if statement? It's going to look at the trues and falses. So anything with the falses, it's going to bring back false. But with the trues, it's going to bring back the numbers, 4, 5, and 6. All right. So that's basically going to be our rows that it's going to bring back. Now, with small, since we're in the first cell, small is going to bring back the smallest of this set. So the smallest of this set is 4. Right? Oh, so it's going to bring back 4 because the small is looking at this array 
and that one was based off this column, this columns formula. So this columns formula is looking at the range from F2 to F2. So the, we have the dollar sign in front of the F2, and what happens when we have the dollar sign in front of the F2 is it locks it in. So when we later on, when I go ahead and copy the formula across, so what's going to happen is when I copy this over, that F2 is going to be F2. When, I, when we look at the formula cell, it's going to be dollar sign F2 colon G2. It's going to move over, and then it's going to be H F2 dollar sign F2 colon H2. And so what the columns does is it looks at how many columns are in that range. So since it's F2 to F2, that's one column. When it goes over, F, and we see that range going F2 to G2, there's two columns. So it's one, two, and three. So what small does is when it sees that one, which was in the cell, it's going to pick up the first smallest value. When we go into G, it's going to pick up the this one. Would, one will turn into a two, and so it's going to pick up the second smallest value. And of course, three would be the three smallest value, which is six here. So once I click Evaluate, you'll see that the four then becomes selected. So then what happens here now is it's going to look at this index A two B seven. It's going to look at the row number four, one, two, three, four and then the column number is 2. So this is the second column. It's going to look at the second column and it's going to bring back this value of 73 here, which is here. So once I click Evaluate, you'll see the 73 here. If I close it and I copy it over, you'll see it corresponds now to the other values here. So if I click in this cell, you'll notice that, as I mentioned before, the columns that increase from F2 to G2. So how many columns are from F2 to G2? Two columns. So it's going to be the second smallest value. So the, of course the second smallest value is going to be, remember there was 4, 5, and 6? It's going to be 5. So it's going to bring back 36 here. And then the same thing with 72. That's the third smallest value. Now if I take this and I go ahead and copy it down, you'll see that it also brings over the other values. So what happens here, if you look, the Alice is E3. The reason why I have the dollar sign in front of the E is when you copy it down, it will lock it to that row. Or if you copy it across, it will lock it to this row. But the three is not doesn't have a dollar sign, so it will go down rows. If I go here, you see E2, E3, E4. So basically, when I copied it down, you'll pick up the corresponding row and column intersections. Now there are these error messages here, and what it, what it does is it doesn't see any it doesn't see a second instance of Chris it doesn't see a third instance of Alice so in order to kinda of just get rid of these you can actually use another function the if error function so I'm gonna go ahead and scoop this up here control C and then go into the cell oops escape go into this cell and then control V and what I need to do to put in front of the index is an if error statement. So I'm going to do if error, just tab to complete that. So if this results in an error, comma, then just create an empty space. But it's not if it doesn't result in the error, use this function, use this formula. So I'm going to, this also needs to have a, a Control Shift keyboard entry because it's an array function and you see 73 and if I copy it over oops if I copy it over and then copy it down you'll see that the errors disappear and it's just a blank now so it's the same thing so if you want to be ni a little n nicer neater and tidier then you can use that if error statement so this is the way that you can actually use a couple functions to return multiple values based on one lookup uh, there's also some documentation that I found on the web. Actually, this comes from Microsoft.com site. If you Google how to look up a value in the list and return multiple corresponding values, you'll probably find it there. So I just did a little bit of a change using the columns function instead of the row function that they had. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.